Have you checked the Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers, along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower as Jaime and Fuego, and if it please you, join me here for a bit of palaver on Hail! Hail to Stephen King, damn reason, guys, and uh, obviously, bevenidos and welcome to the horror show. Uh, this is the weekly worship, every Saturday, talking all things Psy King, El Rey, as I so belovedly call him, and... Uh, this is another one of the episodes where we are veering away from literature in particular and talking television because it is of a timely reemergence for Mr. Mercedes. And this is discussing the second season of the show, which uh, aired from August of 2018 through October of that same year. Once again, returning Brendan Gleeson as the awesome Bill Hodges. Um, Harry Treadway as Brady again in a performance that might have even been better this time. Definitely some more range, especially in the back half of it. Um, the entire ensemble is great. Uh, Deanna Jerome, Holly, uh, the entire gang. Lou, who gets some more time in this too. She does a great job with her subplot. But um, So interestingly enough, what they decided to do with this, and though just a, another thing to remind you that the reason I am doing these first two seasons of the show finally is because uh, the now defunct AT&T Audience Network, uh, they had the chance to pass the baton of this show over to NBC Universal's Peacock TV streaming app, which I guess is going to be rebranded Universal Plus at some particular point. But uh, yeah, so the first two seasons, not the third one unfortunately, at least not yet, are both available there. Season one, which I already reviewed, it is available for free, totally for free, because Peacock is one of those services where they like give you a taste of like a few episodes of a show or like a season or two of a show and then they're like yo you want to watch the rest haha <laughs> first hit's free you know then you got to pay after that so the second season is a pay sort of situation however they have a seven day free trial and then it's only $4.99 a month after that so I don't know if that's worth it to you or not but there's 10 episodes in this second season and uh, I mean, if you can knock 10 out in a seven day free trial, by all means, or if you want like over 10 hours of entertainment, if you add up the runtime of all of these episodes, I mean, $4.99, that's like, I mean, come on guys, what do you spend to VOD a movie and just rent it? You know, $4.99, $6.99, whatever. It's a pretty sweet deal, especially for a show that is masterfully put together. Um, Jack Bender returns uh, to direct most of the episodes, I think there was like two or three of the 10 issue, uh, 10 episode order that he didn't end up doing, but David E. Kelly writing, developing, being, you know, the main showrunner of this, it's a very accomplished show and one that I still hope that more people get the chance to check out. So now to the point I was initially intending to make. So to continue the Brady story as opposed to doing the one on, one off, one back on sort of situation like we got in the Bill Hodges trilogy, um, Basically, they went from book one, uh, which is what the first season was essentially about, very faithfully adapted, and for, for the most part, just expanded on a couple characters uh, like Brady's boss and Lou, um, his mother a little bit more with some of her backstory and an old high school flame and so on and so forth. But yeah, they, and also Bill's neighbor, who I don't particularly like that much, she feels out of place, but whatever, that's not the point. So the first season was actually a very faithful adaptation of Mr. Mercedes, the first book. Second season, jumping from book one to book three, which was End of Watch, which came out in June of 2016, I must say, and I've gone on record on this channel talking about this before, and I'll do a five-year anniversary sometime in 2021 all about uh, End of Watch, which I really liked Mr. Mercedes, um, the book. I loved Finders Keepers, the second book in the series, which did something drastically different, and I just dug the hell out of it. And then End of Watch was a big-time disappointment for me especially with the bringing in supernatural elements and stuff, but once again, I'm not here to talk about that book. I will say that season two, while adapting End of Watch in a lot of ways, really diverts from that source material, so much so that I like the second season of Mr. Mercedes way better than I like End of Watch. Seriously, especially in the back half of the season, they do a lot of stuff differently. They still incorporate some of the elements, which essentially entails at, at the end of the first season, you know, Holly with her uh, bag of uh, coins or uh, 
ball bearings, whatever the hell it was, I forget specifically, but she's got like a bag of a bunch of pieces of metal, bashes the hell out of his head, he's in a coma, but he's not dead, obviously, and uh, he's being kept alive on all kinds of machines and stuff like that. And uh, one thing they did in uh, Finders Keepers, the second book, was just to keep in mind that Brady is still around, there's a scene where Hodges goes to visit him. And that is a part of this season in, like, the first episode. It it's makes the opening credits of it that you see, uh, you know, time and time again. So that's a thing. But an idea that they took from the bookend of Watch and expanded upon, intriguingly in my estimation, was the, um, as, as Brady is gaining these, like, powers of being able to manipulate people and kind of jump into their heads and all that other stuff, um, there is this doctor who, it's explained a little bit better, that he is giving Brady, at the behest of his, like, bitch of a wife who is very manipulative, he's basically giving Brady these experimental drugs from this Chinese company that are off-market, um, they had tested prisoners with them and stuff like that, but he's not telling anybody that he is trying to use this drug, this, uh, Cenafil, uh, Cenabil, whatever. Um, basically, experimental drug that is supposed to be able to help regrow brain tissue. And uh, in the future, they're like, could we cure Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all these different things if this stuff that we're just using Brady as our guinea pig, our test bunny, our lab rat, whatever term you like. Um, so there is kind of good intention, at least a little bit, but you can tell this surgeon, his wife is majorly uh, just kind of pulling the strings and uh, there's a subplot with her being pregnant and she's like, if you don't continue giving him this drug, I am going to come after you and all that other stuff. So there, there is at least, I felt like there is more grounded explanation for some of the supernatural elements that kind of creep into this second season of the show, as opposed to being very heavy-handed, like King himself was with them. Now, there's still hints of stuff, like the weird little tablet reader things that, um, in the book, King is very just explaining, ex explaining about the fact that this game on these little cheap tablets is what's controlling people. It's, it's kind of glossed over in this, so it doesn't seem as silly, but they do a very good job with the fact that as Brady is regaining this power, but also gaining some new ones. Uh, just the way they film himself in his own head, learning about these abilities. He's almost in like this control room sort of situation, very similar to his basement in the first season. It's done well, it really is. And also where uh, one of the orderlies there who's been taking control of him, this, uh, this nurse named Sadie, just the way he takes control of her, the fact that she was epileptic and you know she's off of her meds. And so you can kind of tell that maybe those who aren't as strong of mind or more susceptible to Hodges, just like uh, uh, Library Al, another character who was from uh, Dumb and Dumb or Gas Man. How do they know I got gas? Yeah, he's, he's one of the other characters that Brady takes control of. So I felt like the explanation of him getting these weird kind of otherworldly powers and stuff, and also him just regaining the brain tissue and the fact that there's an actual surgical element, which I think it was a surgical element specifically in End of Watch, but once again, it's been like almost four and a half years since I read it, and I was trying not to make those specific comparisons and distinctions just to judge this uh, really awesome show on its own merits. So as, as Brady is finally getting closer to being able to come out of it and actually get out of the hospital bed and maybe, maybe try and escape, um, yeah, there's just the, the stuff with his little brother that they keep flashing back to without spoiling that. Um, that just, it's well done. It's very well done. And uh, the character of Lou, uh, his best friend basically, you know, uh, who he worked with at the, electro at the electronics store, who he stabs at the end of the first season, seeing the PTSD and the trauma that she is still trying to come to grips with as she sinks into, you know, alcoholism and, you know, a little bit of substance abuse without getting into too many specifics and how it's ruining her relationship and how she is just the torment and the sad anguish that she is experiencing. They expand on her character very, very well because she's pretty much a nothing in the book in, in that uh, in that first entry and so uh, in, in the Mr. Mercedes uh, you know the first book of the Hodges trilogy I need to start giving that that distinction just so you guys don't get confused but yeah the stuff they do with Lou is great um, Jerome has an initial subplot with coming back from Harvard maybe not doing so well he's growing this goat and he's he's vaping and stuff you know so yeah he's he's grown up a little bit which is cool and they give him a little bit more to chew on which I like I mean 
And also the actress who plays Holly, um, I know the Holly from The Outsider being drastically different. Um, a lot of people enjoyed her performance, and I did too. It was a different turn of the wheel, though, and it's, it's very obvious why the team behind The Outsider wanted to name that character, um, the girl from Bad Times at the El Royale. She's a very talented British singer and actress. Um, but they, they wanted to give the character a different name because, to me, she doesn't really feel like the written Holly, which is fine. As I said, different level of the tower, it's interpretation, you know, whatever, and I've become more accepting of those sort of things. But our actress in this, who plays Holly, she feels so much more like the kind of on-edge Holly, like, neuroticisms and stuff like that. Like, she feels more so like Holly in this second season. Not that she didn't in the first one, but, I mean, just like in the original book of the Hodges trilogy, she doesn't show up until halfway through the first season, whereas she's at the forefront, you know, for pretty much the predominance of this, you know, working with Bill, having this kind of back and forth, father-daughter sort of situation. And uh, as you find out at the end of the first season, Bill was trying to repair his relationship with his daughter who like hates him for some things that had, you know, gone down with her own, you know, substance and alcohol abuse and whatever. But yeah, Bill straight up has this great relationship uh, with Holly and it's very cute and it's it's kind of a bantery snippy back and forthness and yet you can really tell that just the love and the care is there. Same with Jerome, man. I mean, that trio is awesome and they're very well developed and the fact that Jerome in like the second book and I mean he gets a little bit more to chew on in, uh, you know, uh, end of watch and stuff but I was just really glad that, you know, he was around for the predominance of it and it has this like King is really into the whole, like, grandpa, you know, younger, uh, you know, younger grandson sort of situation. I mean, he did it with, uh, you know, obviously Hearts in Atlantis and as uh, recent as uh, Mr. Harrigan's phone. And so it's, it's a trope that he likes to come back to, but it's always written very endearingly. And I dig the dynamic amongst the three of these characters. The character who I still feel is totally out of place is the addition of Bill's neighbor, who in the first season was trying to sleep with him, and they back off on that here. I mean, it's like joked about, you know, just sporadically, but Bill is trying to actually repair his relationship with his ex-wife, and so that's like a big plot point here. Well, not a big plot point, but it's one that is developed over the course, you know, of uh, this season of the show. So, yeah, I mean, Acting is top-notch across the board, and it's, I mean, there's a lot of impressive beats and stuff like that. Um, there are some very... Bill loses another person in this season without specifying who it is, and in turn, there's a new character of this DA agent who kind of shifts in to that role, um, you know, basically wanting Brady to come out of this coma so he can properly prosecute him and, you know, give him the death penalty or at least, you know, throw him away and in prison and, you know, just flush the key down the toilet sort of situation. But um, the, the grieving sequences that are in the very first uh, episode of this show are really touching and really tough. And I have to also say the music throughout this entire show, it spans the gamut of classic stuff, whether it's, you know, more on the rock side, whether it's like kind of the, you know, doo -y old, like, almost Motown sort of stuff, and just that, that era. I'm glad that they don't really... I, I, I love the punk rock that Brady was listening to in the first season, but that's really less at the forefront. It's more so, like, dare I say, old-timer music, but I love that sort of stuff. You know, with the 50s and 60s tunes and occasionally 70s stuff that I grew up on, driving around with my pops listening to in the truck. It, it's, it's rife with that throughout. The soundtrack is terrific, and it always just imbues whether it's a sense of sadness or whimsy. It's like all across the board in that regard, man. The, the show is just really professionally put together from top to bottom, whether it's the production values, whether it's the acting. It's an amusingly vulgar show. As I was watching this with Lady Catherine, there are so many F-bombs in this show. It is unapologetically R-rated with its constant language and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mentioned Jerome coming home, vaping, being all grossed up. Uh, Holly's OCD. I'm just making sure. I'd like to not even have to work off these notes, if at all possible. Um, there is there is that one nod to one of the cases from the Second Finders Keepers book where uh, Todgers is trying to go after this guy who's stolen a plane. So that was at least a cool little Easter egg for fans of the second book like me to at least show a little bit of just how he's handling 
you know, being this repo man, this private investigator, as opposed to a proper cop. So I thought that that was dope. Um, yeah, the expanded bits with Lou, uh, Bill's ex-wife, the neighbor. Yeah, I've mentioned all of that. And also just the, the, the first suicide of a character that we get in this, um, you know, the character of Sadie. It's very, very tragic and very crazy. I guess since I did mention that earlier, sorry for that little spoiler, everybody, but it is still fairly early in the season when you're trying to wrap your head around everything that, uh, that Brady has done. The new DA starts out as an asshole, but he does kind of come around to having a relationship with Bill, almost like a, you know, being on the same level of and just respecting each other sort of thing. So I thought that that was pretty great. Um, there is something with Jerome's mother, which was changed in this, that was obviously not in the original book. And I was just like, damn, that's, uh, that's something. Okay. And uh, they do try to do a little bit more with Jerome's little sister and how she's getting a little bit older. She's dressing kind of punk rock and things like that. But very, very similar to the stuff with the tablet. It's kind of implied and then abandoned and just not just just even like you know the you know education problems with Jerome and going away to school at such a uh, just high priority place like Harvard where you have to be just as intellectually savvy as anything you can imagine but also the, it's one thing to be intelligent it's another thing to implement the work ethic and stuff like that as opposed to resting on the laurels of your of your intelligence and so that's kind of a paradigm that he's experiencing but it's kind of it's once again, you know, it's another of these plot points that they give you a little bit of info about and then they just don't don't come back to quite as much. But this is probably one of the biggest, biggest things that uh, that I came to really realize as I watched this second season of the show and uh, watched police in, in this role once again. It's going to be controversial. You ready for it? I prefer this Bill Hodges to the way he's written in the books. I really do. He is a little bit more tortured, not to say that Bill wasn't, but you know, Bill kind of writes the ship, you know, by, by the second book. And uh, yeah, he has other issues that pop up in End of Watch, but they're more so like health issues without getting, getting too into them. But he is constantly like, he's, first of all, he's vulgar, he's rougher around the edges, he's snippier with the people who really care about him and are trying to help him. He's also, he's very bold and just kind of impulsive with, you know, basically putting his reputation and his business with Holly of Finders Keepers in danger by just some of the dumb decisions he makes, poking his nose around way more so than he should. Um, something he does when he goes to visit Brady early in the season. Something that he does with the doctor who's been giving the experimental medications uh, late in the season, you know. He really, uh, He's ballsy, and uh, it puts a lot of people in danger, himself included, and yet that sort of, the, the fact that he's a damaged dude, and the fact that, I, I, I don't know, and the fact that he's Irish too, man, I don't know what it is, but Hodges will forever seem Irish in my head now, and uh, I just can't wait to start this third season. Now, I had previously watched one and two. The, I have the third season on DVD. It's not streaming anywhere currently, unfortunately. And uh, hopefully it arrives on Peacock TV pretty soon. But yeah, I can't wait to see what they do in that third season with taking a step back to the Finders Keepers story with the obsessive book dude and, and everything. And so that's, uh, that's one that I'm stoked to see. But man, at the end of this season, they just veered, veered into a direction with some courtroom stuff without getting too into it and uh, also with just returning to Lou and everything that she dealt with as Brady's best friend and one of the few people who like understood him it's it was so much better man at least for me uh being David E Kelly the one who developed this it made sense that they veered into the into the courtroom and more into the actual can we prosecute Brady sort of aspect which was really fascinating and uh yeah, after Bill, Bill just gets himself into some shit in this season. There's, there's another. He's hospitalized again mid-season after a near-death altercation with somebody uh, that's being controlled by Brady. And there's a very touching scene. That, well, everybody is there. You know, his his ex-wife shows up, the neighbor, Jerome, Holly, and stuff. But there is a really tender moment with him and Holly that this actress is great. She's definitely prettier than I ever envisioned Tolly in my head. She doesn't have that kind of kind of plainly mousy sort of situation, but she plays the character very well. Her dialogue delivery, 
some of her mannerisms and stuff. It's just, it's really, really good. And their, their relationship at the core of it is one of my favorite things. And well, the, the whole, the, the trio in general, the trinity of Jerome, Holly, and Hodges. And I like the fact that they kept that chemistry and made it even stronger. The actors just felt felt more relaxed and natural and within their characters amongst each other, which is something I really dug. But yeah, I make the bold statement, just to retread to it real quick, that I prefer uh, this on-screen Hodges. Not that I don't love that Hodges character in the books, but just the expansion on him and making him a little bit, you know, tougher, dumber at times, more impulsive, definitely more emotional. Um, they gave him more to chew on, and that is the interesting thing about 10 hours of television compared to a 400-page book. Now, granted, if you take the entire trilogy together, I mean, 30 hours uh, versus, uh, you know, probably about a little over 1,200 pages for those three books in the Hodges trilogy. I don't know, but I definitely, guys, I recommend the hell out of Mr. Mercedes Season 2. Once again, Peacock TV is where you can find it. Um, first season, totally free. Second season right here, which um, if you really want to own it, Amazon is your best spot. I think it's like 20 bucks for it, which is where I got it. And, and it was in a couple stores like Target for a while. I don't think it's still there. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, second season, it's free seven day trial or $4.99 a month. It is so worth your time. There's still some things that I didn't like as much about it. Like they they spent too much time in Brady's head and he had like these silly training sequences and stuff like that. But I mean, as a whole, there's really, there's really not much that I can say about this aside from, you know, uh, the prior criticisms about the out of placeness of the neighbor and trying to factor into the narrative when she, she doesn't really do very much. She's like, oh, rebuild my gazebo. And that's, that's about it. So yeah, man, th this is, this is streamlined storytelling. The changes I really enjoyed compared to the end of watch book. And uh, yeah, once again, Mr. Mercedes. Season two, it's pretty badass. So I've been Jaime Fuego. Y'all can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. Uh, just a reminder, there is also a Hail to Stephen King Facebook group, guys. And uh, yes, that's where we have daily palaver, almost a thousand people on there. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we do a book of the month for this show, the first Saturday of every new month. So at the beginning of December, first Saturday of December, we are gonna be doing for its anniversary, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, as I announced during the Salem's Lot review. Uh, obviously, a like, a share, a subscribe here on The Horror Show is supremely appreciated, guys. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of it until I cover the third season of Mr. Mercedes, um, which I'm not sure when I'm going to do. I'll probably, probably watch and film the review, but I don't know if I'll drop it until it's actually on Peacock. So you may see a very different looking Fuego months down the road whenever that debuts and stuff. But uh, yes. As always, your presence here, having a little time with me is greatly appreciated, everyone. And uh, until the Wheel of Cock comes around once more, hasta luego, amigos, constant readers and viewers alike, say thank you for your time today. I hope we share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. And until then, stay scared. And yes, read Stephen King, obviously. But in this instance, I urge you to watch Stephen King.